Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video, the Atlantic is starting to wake up and we could see our next tropical storm form in the next seven days. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Monday, July 29th, 2024. The black arrow is pointing towards Disturbance 1, a tropical wave moving through the Atlantic Basin. Not much energy or moisture with it right now, but the National Hurricane Center is saying with time as it moves westward towards the Caribbean islands and the southeast coast of the United States, we could see a potential tropical storm form, especially as it merges with a tropical wave behind it, which I have marked in purple. There's another one that's coming off the coast of Africa by our second purple arrow on the right. And in the eastern Pacific, we have a couple of areas of interest, uh, namely another tropical storm by our left purple arrow with a high chance of development into a tropical storm or even a hurricane. So here's the vorticity, the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with our tropical waves. You can see the one on the bottom left of your screen. That's our tropical wave in the eastern Pacific basin. Then we have two in the main development region. Uh, that are going to be merging and becoming one consolidated uh, tropical wave as they continue westward towards the Caribbean islands and potentially Florida, the Gulf of Mexico, or the east coast of the United States. So you can see the Pacific is very busy right now. We have three areas of interest that we're watching. One of them in red is Invest 94E. And you can see here on the models going out for the next 10 days, we could see not only that one develop, the one behind it, potentially into two hurricanes, but as you can see, should be no threat to land. Now, the reason why the Pacific is highly active at the moment is we have this convectively coupled Kelvin wave that's moving through. It's making things more favorable and conducive for development with more rising air. So that's that green blob that you see going diagonal across your screen. Now, that's associated with our red arrow where we are today. That green blob is going to move downward and diagonal to the right. So by the time we get to the end of this week, by this weekend on August 6th, you see that's going to be directly over the Eastern Pacific Basin, entering the, the Atlantic Basin. That's going to make things more conducive for development in the Atlantic Basin, which is why this tropical wave, which has no moisture right now, will potentially develop as it gets closer to the United States. And then you can that's going to be around August 6th, which is our black arrow. And then by the time we get to the peak of hurricane season in the beginning of September by our pink arrow here, you'll see another convectively coupled Kelvin wave will be coming through. And this entire time we have on the left side of our screen rising air over Africa. So we're going to see tropical wave at the tropical wave tropical wave coming off the coast just making things more conducive for development as we go deeper into the hurricane season so here's our empty satellite image of our tropical wave with barely any moisture at the moment which is why the national hurricane center is saying zero percent chance over the next two days but we have a 50 50 shot over the next seven days of seeing this develop somewhere in the greater antilles bahamas and heading towards uh, Florida, either going towards the Gulf of Mexico or potentially up the east coast of the United States. So let's see what scenario could potentially happen. European model first, black hexagon is our disturbance one, merging with our purple tropical wave right behind it. Barely any moisture with it right now. It's, in, it's embedded in the Saharan air layer, but it will be interacting with some moisture from our surface trough right near Turks and Caicos, I mean, Trinidad de Bayos, sorry, and South America. So we have this light wind shear environment. It's going to be conducive for further development. So we see the two waves merge by tomorrow on Tuesday the 30th. And that combined wave will make its way towards the northern Lesser Antilles Islands by Wednesday the 31st. And you can see how it the two will 
have a lot more moisture with it as it interacts with that surface trough and other tropical wave today. We will have this light wind shear environment, which will be conducive for tropical development. And by the time we get to this weekend on Saturday the 3rd, you can see how we have with that moisture a vorticity max starting to form right in the round the northern Bahamas. Why? Well, we have an upper level ridge overhead right smack in the middle of the low pressure system that is very favorable for development with expanding air aloft, converging air, air coming towards the low pressure in the lower levels. That creates that low wind shear environment and it's a protective moisture bubble surrounded by that Saharan air layer. So then by the time we get to Monday, August 5th, this is just one potential scenario, we could have a 1,006 millibar tropical storm right off the east coast of the United States, moving around our Bermuda Azores High off the east coast. So depending on the strength of that high pressure, the storm, it could actually be grazing the southeast coast. It could just stay offshore. Or if it's really strong, like on the GFS model, we could actually see this tropical wave make its way towards the Gulf of Mexico instead. So all those are possibilities. Here's the ensemble model, the spaghetti track guidance models showing where this potential tropical wave can go and how strong it can get. Potentially on the high end, we could see a category one hurricane if it stays more out to water as you can see with the oranges on the European model ensemble models. And then on the GFS, you can see a little bit less support for this storm, but mostly an even split between going into the Gulf of Mexico or the east coast of the United States, whereas the European model favors the more east coast track. Uh, just depending, will it stay more, recurve more out to sea or get a little too close for comfort for the east coast of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, or North Carolina before recurving back out to sea potentially. So we'll continue to monitor disturbance one and if it's going to develop and if it does where it heads from there. Too many factors to say right now. Let's just see if it forms first. As a reminder, we have super things available on the ciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, you can please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.